This morning on Money Watch, investing in your future in this tough economy. One way to do that is to go back to school. The new government report found almost half the adults in America take some form of continuing education. And here with some advice is AOL Consumer Advisor Regina Lewis. Regina, good morning. Thanks, Russ. Simply a case of folks saying, look, the economy's bad, you got to try something else, right? you got to do something, and you have time. There are roughly three kinds of continuing education. It's a pretty broad term. The first is a degree program, mm -hmm. taking classes for credit. Gotcha. The second is accreditation. Maybe I need a certificate, very common in teaching, nursing, and technology. And then the third is just taking classes in an area of interest with an eye towards lifelong learning, career protection, frankly, and career advancement. Historically, is this typical when the economy is bad, folks go back to school to try something different? Uh, they do, absolutely. That's not to say, and there's a lot of confusion here, a lot of people think online classes in particular are uh -huh. cheaper. They are not. I looked into University of Phoenix, the biggest player online, an associate's degree, 24000 a master's degree, 64000 Okay, oh, God, not cheap at all. No. Now, when you're weighing this decision, I mean, how do you know if it's worth the cost? Well, I think you have to work backwards. So if you are currently employed, you have to say, especially if you're older, how can I recession-proof my career? Because uh -huh. you can be sure, Russ, that there's a 28-year-old down the hall who is up on the latest trends in your industry and very tech-savvy. If you're out of work, look at the job description for the position you wish you could have. See what the criteria is. But here's the catch and where a lot of people are gravely disappointed, mm -hmm. waste a lot of money, and then don't get the position. If it says five to seven years related work experience, mm. you can get all the degrees in the world, and that will be a non-starter. You still won't get the position. In fact, they may even have a policy where they won't even look at your resume. Oh, I say you're right. Not a way to go in that no. case. Definitely not. If you've been out of work for a while, is continuing education the right choice for you? Even more so. Here's why. The threshold for answering the question, so what have you been doing for the last five, seven months, last year and a half, gets higher. They're looking for proof of productivity, that you did something constructive with that time. So you don't have a job, but obviously, so obviously paying for this is a problem. But you say there are places to go for help? There are. If that? you do have a job, your employer may chip in. If you are being laid off, you can negotiate it, possibly, to be part of the severance package. And either way, there's a terrific site. It's award-winning. Uh, it was created as a public service called finaid.org. Okay. They have everything, every scholarship, loan that you can imagine. And the Department of Labor also has a site called opportunity.gov, which if you're in construction, particularly hard hit, 16% unemployment, you can literally type in the tools you know how to use, and it will show you listings that require that skill. Mm -hmm. You told, told us some key phrases to look for when you're making this decision. But when people make this, this or going through this process, what's the most common mistake you think you they know, make? I think you've got to be realistic and, and know thyself. So for instance, when you look at job listings right now, there are a ton of positions for engineers and computer programmers. But if you don't have a penchant for technology, you're not going to get there. I mean, it's really not a realistic choice. Something like healthcare may be a smarter trend to play into because maybe I'm a bookkeeper. Well, if I take a few classes in healthcare administration, I could put myself in the running for a position like that. Mm -hmm. It was a surprising statistic you gave a moment ago, just the cost of this. some of these places do you think are going to be inexpensive. The cost is, is significantly not <laughs> inexpensive. It's not, especially somebody, that, a player like the University of Phoenix is a for-profit university. There's been a lot of press coverage about that. Also, if you take a course is for credit, the graduation rate, the completion rate, if you will, is very, very low. That doesn't mean it doesn't have value because you can say, you know, I'm taking four credit classes right. at your, probably your community college is going to be the most affordable bet. Mm, okay. Regina Lewis, as always, thanks a lot. Thanks.